the MoneyWeb Crypto Podcast, where we discuss all things crypto related. Your host, Kieran Ryan. If you're a gold bug, and there are many of them out there, you're probably holding Krugerrands or gold bars of various sizes. The problem with that is you probably need to store them somewhere safe, away from your home, and take out insurance in the event of loss or theft. It was only a matter of time before blockchain technology came up with a better solution, and that solution is digital gold of the kind offered by Pax Gold. That's Pax P-A-X Gold, and that gives you full title to actual gold without the hassle of storing and insuring it. Now, here's another interesting use case for digital gold as a stable coin. In other words, a place to park your crypto profits. So, in other words, if the Bitcoin prices run up and you decide you want to exit the market, you can park that in gold. Gold may not be the most exhilarating asset class over the last few years when compared with the likes of Bitcoin, but it's now trading consistently above $2,000 an ounce. If you've taken profits in November 2021 at the height of the last Bitcoin bull run and then parked those Bitcoin profits in gold, you would have made nearly 10% on your gold holdings. Had you parked it in rands, you would have lost 21%. Well, that's a difference of 30%. That's something to think about. We're going to explore this further. And to do that, we're joined by Rail Demby, CEO of S-Coin and the South African Gold Coin Exchange. Hi, Rail. Good to talk to you. You've recently launched a digital gold offering in partnership with Pax Gold, which I mentioned earlier. Maybe just explain for our listeners, what is Pax Gold and how does it work? Thank you, Karen. It's really like a lecker to be on the show with you. Yeah, so Pax Gold is a digital asset or cryptocurrency that is unique uh, because it's backed by real physical gold. Every Pax G token, as it's called, is uh, represents one ounce, one troy ounce of gold of a London good delivery bar stored in secure vaults in London, England. The key idea behind Pax Gold is it combines the stability and value of gold with the efficiency and speed of blockchain technology. And Pax Gold is a world-class, world-first in this technology. And we have our local partners, Pundi, and these are the guys in between who are powering this all together with us. And Pundi machines are in all of our stores, in the Scoin stores around the country. And it allows us to bridge this gap between physical gold and digital cryptocurrency. Okay, I mentioned that gold is trading about uh, a little bit over $2,000 an ounce. It has been there for quite some time now. Some people are seeing it going a lot higher, particularly as confidence in the global monetary system comes under pressure. For South Africans, Krugerrands is the traditional way to acquire gold, right? So is this still the case? And what's the demand been like? Well, absolutely. Krugerrands are the most popular and most traditional way for South Africans to own gold. Uh, It was obviously the first gold coin ever to be uh, allowed to be purchased by the public in 1967. There's still a tremendous demand for it, uh, both privately and professional investors, as well as institutions. And uh, it still remains very important for South Africans, as we can see with our own sales, is political instability, uh, you know, not really knowing where your money is or how your South African rands are working out for you. It's this reliable way to safeguard and become a store of value. Uh, It's tangible. You get to touch it, feel it, take it home with you in a world full of uncertainties. Uh, there is still a lot of it out there and a lot of people still buying Krugerrands. But, you know, let's be clear, digital gold is a complement, but not really a replacement for physical gold. There will always be gold bugs who want to take coins home with them and uh, store them under their pillows, but they don't have to do that. But um, it's it's here to stay. Krugerrands and all gold coins are, are not going anywhere. Uh, and that's that's at least what we think. Talk about some of the disadvantages of holding physical gold. You mentioned putting it under your pillow, not very safe. Uh, Even having it in a safe in the home, I guess, is not very safe. 
But I'm specifically thinking here about the danger of governments confiscating it. And you think that might be a bit ridiculous. It's actually happened in the past. Um, It happened in the U.S. in 1933. And that's when the U.S. government made it illegal to hold gold worth more than $100. And so people had to basically hand over their gold to the government. And they were given, they were forced to hand it over at about $20 an ounce. There's been a fear ever since that governments in a squeeze and a cash crunch might actually do something similar. What's your view on that? Yeah, it's a a tough one. But, uh, you know, modern economies are more diversified and uh, things have changed. We hope and we pray, but we are pretty confident that such drastic measures are are less likely to happen again. You know, the government intervention can take place. Uh, We never know if that will. But the key is to maintain a diversified portfolio that balances the risk of anything you might have. Uh, We all know don't put all your eggs in one basket. It could be including physical gold, digital gold, digital assets, and traditional financial instruments. It it really depends. Um, But we are pretty comfortable that that shouldn't happen anytime soon. Right. Now, a lot of people who would be interested in physical gold and they hear the word blockchain and they think, oh, it's crypto and it's Bitcoin, and they might not be interested in that and they don't really understand what the blockchain is. So maybe just uh, spend a minute talking about that. The blockchain basically being a ledger which records every transaction that happens in a very secure way, right? Uh, Of course. I mean, uh, using this uh, world-class technology, uh, Paxos is – Really, uh, they've just done a deal with uh, PayPal to be the, uh, the the official stable currency that PayPal is going to use. And we, as uh, market leaders and thought leaders, we, we had to choose the right people to do this. And uh, the current uh, market cap on Pax Gold is uh, about uh, 10 billion rand. So there are other people around the world who also trust this. Uh, when it uh, comes to blockchain itself, is the way this is being uh, regulated is quite unique uh, compared to a uh, another type of uh, cryptocurrency. Is um, this Paxos Trust Company is um, bankrupt remote? Uh, the New York State uh, have regulatory oversight. The New York State Department of Financial Services are auditing, making sure that every single ounce of gold is where it's meant to be. And uh, that is unique. And for someone who may be skeptical, I understand the crypto and blockchain uh, themes can be seen a little bit scary. And we understand that. But all of these uh, protective layers, I mean, even now with Pax Gold, you can go online and type in the uh, Ethereum address of your particular token. It will tell you exactly where that gold coin or that piece of gold is. Uh, and that's just really remarkable. It makes us very comfortable that we're doing the right thing. Um, and the technical side of blockchain is um, this immutable nature of blockchain records. Um, it, it just is protecting everybody. That's why people who do like cryptocurrency uh, really understand that it is protected and public and um, some could maybe trust blockchain more than uh, the current financial system. Okay, so you said that you can actually go onto the Ethereum blockchain. Now, Ethereum, people will recognize that as a crypto token. Uh, but it is also a blockchain and it's being used. It is the most widely used for business applications around the world. So th- this information is publicly available. You can go and interrogate to see if your your gold holdings are actually in existence. And it'll have a full record of all the transactions that you've made. Correct? Yeah. So from a crypto point of view, every one of your transactions would be uh, listed out there, just like the address, the the history of that. But uh, every single month, Paxos um, Trust Company would promote and send out their remittance or their recon and show you every single transaction and the exact amount of gold being stored there right now. So we would be pretty comfortable with that as well. Okay. Is there a little bit of a sales pitch involved in this for a lot of people uh, who are used to physical gold? I mean, how safe is it that you, you 
acquiring digital gold and not the physical version. I mean, it does handle some of the problems that you have with physical gold. For example, storage costs and insurance, right? Yeah. So again, as traditional gold bugs, uh, actually at the coin shops and the South African Gold Coin Exchange, we do offer safe gold, which is a a storage facility and it's really really reasonable but you know there are people who want their gold they want to take it home with them the end no stories and if people are happy to leave it with us uh, it's really cool but when you enter into this world there is this layer of understanding you know where is this gold where is it really and as we've spoken this regulatory oversight and technology that it's backed on it really protects us and the customer and it's completely assured the digital gold is there you can tap it in and see it's being uh, audited and looked after by the new york state department of financial services it, that's pretty good um it's designed to protect the consumers protect and ensure that integrity of the product that's offered and pax gold like i said is part of the Paxos family. They're also doing a, a stable dollar coin and some other stable coins. And uh, the audits are there and this blockchain technology. So the, that's a regulatory oversight. You can actually go and search and see where your coins, your gold is. It's being audited third party and it's uh, backed by real blockchain technology. Right. So you mentioned stablecoin. I want to pivot to that for a second, because in the intro, I did point out that if you had uh, a big run up in Bitcoin and you decided you wanted to park your profits for a bit, normally what you would do is you put in a dollar back stablecoin. But you can actually do that with Pax Gold. You can put it into gold and use that as a stablecoin. You mentioned Paxos developing a, a, a dollar gold stablecoin as well. Are you starting to see some adoption of this? In other words, gold as a stablecoin? So it's it's uh, it might be quite technical in some ways, but Pax Gold shares a lot of characteristics with a stable coin, particularly because it uh, refers to something being backed by something else like a digital currency. But stable coins usually refer to a, a currency itself, and this is backed by gold that's priced in dollars. It is sort of a a half cousin of a stable coin or a very close cousin. But the stability inherently tied to the value of gold is, some would say, is even better than fiat currency because if you have dollars, if the dollar weakens or if you have a digital South African rand, it's affected by that. Gold, it's the original money. Um, so it's the ultimate stable coin. But as far as this goes, it's not exactly a stable coin. But the concept of using digital gold as a form of stable coin is very much getting traction. People are understanding it. They understand that maybe they don't want to keep the gold with them. But if they know that it's being stored and it is fully authenticated, insured, uh, off-site, um, audited, they feel very comfortable. So this is coming but like I said, again, you will always have the original gold bugs who just want to take the coins home with them. And I might add, what Pax Gold is doing for us is clients can redeem. They can have Pax Gold and come into our store and pay in the form of Pax Gold and re redeem actual gold coins. And if you have gold coins and you want to rather have Pax Gold, you can do the same thing. So we are not only selling the Pax Gold, we are redeeming it for real gold coins or collectibles or uh, any other gold that you might be interested in. All right. So if somebody wants digital gold and they change their mind six months down the road, they can come to you and they can swap that out for the actual physical gold. Yeah, of course. And is there a cost associated with that? Look, there are costs with, uh, within the realm of uh, transactional costs, and our rates are actually on par with uh, some of the exchanges online. Uh, this is a world first. There's never really been such a connection with the physical presence of the actual uh, Pundi machine, which is being used, and the uh, actual crypto being transferred, if you will. Uh, the fees are the fees. I mean, uh, if, if we compare it to uh, an exchange, we could be pretty close, maybe a bit more. So if you understand 
the value of redemption and taking something that's digital and turning it into gold, you would appreciate that it takes a bit to get that done and it can cost a little bit. But uh, if you, you know, you pay for the privilege of being able to do that, as uh, if you want to keep all of your gold in the cloud or on the blockchain, or then you can as well. But this gives you uh, really a world first in converting that to physical. All right. So give, give us a sense of the, uh, the, the actual percentage cost. If I was to go and buy Pax Gold through you, what would I be paying? You would pay about 15% fees on the value. Fifteen percent. That covers what the uh, the storage and the insurance as well. No, so it's the the costs of transaction of uh, through the blockchain itself, uh, the fees and the transferring it from what we would say a crypto into South African rands back into, and then the client can have gold, Pax gold. It sounds quite high, is it? So when we measured it against exchanges, some of them were between uh, 12 and 15%. So we're actually on par with some exchanges. And we're talking about turning something digital into something physical. No, I understood. There are logistics uh, behind, behind the scene there, which do no doubt uh, incur quite some quite serious costs in terms of storage and, and transactional costs and admin. Okay, final question. Why should we be excited about gold, physical or digital gold, uh, in the coming few years? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's been around for over 6,000 years, uh, the original money. You know, economic uncertainty, world turmoil, political, economic issues, having an inflation hedge where your money becomes worth less and the gold remains the same and continues to increase for a South African. To own gold being priced in dollars means you have a currency hedge as well. Diversifying your money, uh, you might have stock shares, property, you might feel like you need what you said at the beginning is uh, you've made some money on crypto and now you must take some profits. I mean, uh, Bitcoin uh, yesterday was just about a million rand. And if you had bought it at uh, 50,000, I mean, why wouldn't you want to put some in Pax Gold or get real physical gold and uh, earn some profits? And, you know, it's always been more like an insurance policy gold. When things go up, that's great. When the world hits uh, some serious times, gold has proven time and time again to come out the other side. So diversify maybe 10, 15% of all your funds, all your crypto, anything like that. It seems like a a reasonable idea for most people, but the hardcore crypto guys might think I'm keeping every cent in Bitcoin and that's, that's okay as well. You know, and again, the technology and the advancements of digital gold make it safer. And uh, I believe that in the coming years, it could just continue to be accepted and uh, people understand and really back it completely. Um, and lastly is the, the rest of the world, uh, emerging markets are they have never bought more gold ever before. Uh, China and India, uh, there's uh, economic growth and wealth there. Uh, but having physical gold really, I've seen it before here. There are um, clients who have bought in the past and a rainy day has come up and uh, maybe something in their business hasn't worked out and they say to us, like, thank God I had this gold. Uh, really, I could afford it at the time. I needed it, and now I need to sell it. Um, so that insurance policy is absolutely what we we want for people. Great stuff, Rail Demby, CEO of Scoin and the South African Gold Coin Exchange. Thanks for joining us, Rail. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the MoneyWeb Crypto Podcast, hosted by Kieran Ryan. To listen to our other podcasts, go to moneyweb.co.za or the MoneyWeb app and follow MoneyWeb News for daily updates.